Welcome to the woodshed. In our industry, there is the there is this theory that there's risky ideas and then safe ideas, and the notion of risky ideas and safe ideas is. Um, like we did a thing for Burger King years ago called Whopper Freakout, where we took a restaurant, we pulled the Whopper off the menu, and then we recorded people freaking out, you know? And, uh, um, and that would be considered a risky idea by a lot of the, the industry. To me, what's risky is to spend money on a thing that no one pays attention to. 90, you know, 5% of what's out there creates the background noise that you have to pop through. And so the, the, um, the idea doesn't have to be crazy or risky or anything, but, but it does, in our opinion, it has to be in that upper echelon of things that would get noticed. And that's, you know, that's really difficult because the difference is if we make an idea that's better than 94% of what's out there, no one really sees it. It kind of, you know, and you, you might remember it for the week that it's on the air or, or whatever, but it's, you don't really remember it. But when we make the thing that's Two to three percent better. You might remember it for twenty years. We're we're employing different processes now to sort of take the courage out of it because it used to be a thing you'd guess at. There's there's we have the ability now, like in real time, to get real data off of real customers and what they're reacting to. So you know we're harnessing that rather than doing <laughs> focus groups that are famously erroneous and and other other uh, testing tactics that aren't great. It also depends on how you define crazy. I think it's crazy to spend spend five million dollars on something no one sees. You know, so yeah, yeah, it does it does depend. Our business is really challenged right now though because everything's data driven, and we live in a world that's not data driven, that's opinion dip driven, and so the the riskier opinions are, have been losing, you know, steadily. So that's why we're folding in new kinds of basically proof points. You know, I think it's like science. I think creativity is more like science than we realize. In science, you take a thesis, and then you, it is a guess, right? That's what it is. So, hey, E equals, uh, equals mc squared. You know, I think that's going to pan out. But then you can run experiments against it. Well, now with creative, anyone here, you can have, it, you can have an idea, and you can then run experiments on that idea. There's ways to hack and learn about any idea. And so you can run, you can buy Google AdWords and buy earbuds and test a headline that says the, you know, worst, worst earbuds for music, you know, uh, on the market. Or, you know, these, these suck for music, the earbuds that suck for music. Test that versus um, amazing uh, um, podcast earbud and just see what happens. You'll get, you know, in 24 hours, you'll have the data about which one performs better. There'll be differences of 40, you know, 50% in, in, in those statements. So um, our industry has been really resistant of, that, of, of data because focus groups are so, they're such shit. And we grew up with focus groups, so we all feel like, oh, all data is bad. But real data is, it's data or data? Data is the guy from Star Trek, data. Um, <laughs> Is, is, is beneficial, right? And it's real. Like, I can't argue with it. And, we, and when we do it, we're always right. No, that's not true. But, but, it's, but it's amazing how much it supports what would be the crazy idea or the, the idea that, you know, has a little bit more edge or has a little bit more sacrifice. Like, over and over, those ideas outperform the, the, the more mundane, vanilla ideas. Why would you not go with the higher performing ideas? So it's, for me, it's been really interesting to watch that evolution.